Work and energy. The definitions here are a little circular in nature. Physicists often say energy is the ability to do work, and work is the transfer of energy. Sort of a circular reference. I think if we just get into it and start talking about what these terms are and how we use them, it'll become a little more clear. We have several types of energy. I'm going to focus on two right now in mechanics. These are the two that we deal with most of the time. Energy of motion, which we call kinetic energy, and stored energy, which we call potential energy. Energy of motion, kinetic energy, we usually use K, and it's one-half mv squared. One-half the mass times the square of the velocity. It depends on the speed of the object. Potential energy. We have several types of potential energies because energy could be stored a number of different ways. One obvious example might be a spring. If you stretch a spring, it has energy stored in it. If you let go, it will release that energy. A spring can store energy. We usually use U for potential energy. So a spring, some books use an S or SP. Some books use EL for elastic potential energy for a spring. But I'll use SP for spring potential energy is one half kx squared. K is the spring constant. So a spring that is very stiff and hard to stretch has a big spring constant. And a spring that stretches very easily and is soft and loose and can be stretched easily has a small spring constant k. x is the distance that the spring is stretched or compressed. Some springs you can compress, some springs you can stretch, and some springs could go either way, stretched or compressed. x is the amount it's stretched or compressed from its equilibrium length. And there's another type of stored energy that we deal with in uh, mechanics quite a bit. And that's the energy that an object has because of its location in a gravitational field. Gravitational potential energy. I'm just going to call it MGH, where H is the height above some reference location. So if an object is sitting on the floor and it can't go any lower, it doesn't have any stored energy because it, the gravitational force can't act on it and make it move. But if we lift it up off the floor a little bit and let go of it, the gravitational force can act on it and make it move. If we lift it up higher, the gravitational force can act on it over a longer distance and make it move even faster. So the higher up we lift it in a gravitational field, the more stored energy it has. Because if we let go of it at that point, the gravitational force will act on it and do work on it and increase the object's energy of motion. Now that we've defined those, let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at this example. We want to apply a force to a block, and we want to see how much work is done on the block by the force F. So I want you to get in the habit of saying it in those exact words. Work done on the block by F. Work done on whatever object you're doing work on by whatever force is doing the work. Work done on a block by friction. Work done on a block by your hand. Just get in the habit of using those words in that form because work has to be done on something and that something's energy has to change because work tells us the change in energy. Here we have a force F. I'm going to draw it right here acting on a block and it moves through a distance d and ends up with some different final velocity perhaps let's see what do you think would happen if this is a frictionless surface and we apply a force f to this box we would expect that the the magnitude of the velocity would increase because there's no friction here the net force on the block is to the right and it's moving to the right and what do we know when the velocity and the acceleration or net force are in the same direction the speed increases when they point in opposite directions the speed decreases so we know just from our knowledge of acceleration and velocity from previous work that the speed is going to increase that v final is going to be greater than v initial because there's acceleration in the same direction as our velocity 
how does work come into play here? Well, I'm just going to sort of tell you. In this case, the work, and we use W for work, and you just are going to have to get used to the fact that we have a lot of W's. I'll apologize right now, but I've already used in previous videos W for weight, the force of gravity acting on an object. Now I'm going to use W for the work done. And we also have W's for other things that you'll see later on. We have uh, the unit of power, the watt, has a W. Yeah, so lots of W's. You just have to know from the context which one it is. In this case, we're talking work done. And in this case, it's the force times the distance. Because the force is constant and it's aligned with the displacement, the object moved in the direction, I'll write it this way, delta x, our displacement was in this direction. So it's the force times the distance. Let's look at a slightly different example. In this case, we have the exact same situation as before, but what we're going to do is apply a force perpendicular to the direction of motion. So let's see, we know that the force is pointing down, the box is sliding to the right. What do you think would happen to the speed of the box? The velocity is in this direction, but our acceleration is zero. There's no acceleration, there's no net force acting on this block. The force pushing down is just balanced by a larger normal force. There's no friction. So there's no acceleration in the direction of motion. We would expect our final velocity to equal our initial velocity. So the work done, in this case, is zero. No energy was transferred to the block. It doesn't move faster and it didn't uh, lose any energy. It doesn't move slower. So there was no energy transfer. So we get zero for the work done on the block by F. And that's one good check if you get in the habit of saying, what happened to the energy of this object? Oh, it didn't change. Then no work was done on it. Okay, example three. So we've looked at a situation where the force was in the direction of motion. We've looked at a situation where the force was perpendicular to the direction of motion. So I think the next obvious thing we want to look at is a force that's applied at some angle, theta. So what do you think is going to be the work done in this case? Do we expect the object to be moving faster or slower or the same as before? Because force is a vector, we can break it up into a force that's perpendicular to our direction of motion and a force that's parallel to our direction of motion. The velocity is still to the right. The force perpendicular to the direction of motion doesn't cause any acceleration, but there is acceleration or net force due to the force in the parallel direction. And since velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, we would expect the speed to increase. Let's take a look at the work done. Maybe you've already filled this in. The work done, we could say it's the work done by F perpendicular plus the work done by F parallel. We already said that F perpendicular does no work and F parallel it's just the force times the distance that the force acts over and so that's just going to be F cosine theta times the distance. We, we need to look at one more case. The case where the force is pointing to the left and the block is sliding to the right. So what do we expect to happen here? Our velocity is to the right, but our acceleration, or the net force, is acting to the left. So when the velocity and the acceleration are in opposite directions, we expect it to slow down. So our work done, in this case, is going to be the force times the distance, and it's going to be multiplied by the cosine of 180 degrees because we have to get negative work done. The object lost energy due to our interaction with it. We did negative work on it. It lost energy. It slowed down. 
So it's negative FD. And let me show you where this cosine 180 comes in. First of all, I've been writing these work done just in, uh, in terms of the force and the distance. But it's really, there's obviously some connection to angle here. Let me go back up. In this case, when the force was in line with our velocity, it was just force times distance. When it was perpendicular, we got zero. And when it was at some arbitrary angle, there was a cosine theta term. So there was really a cosine theta in every one of these cases. For a constant force, the work done in general is the force dot product with our displacement. For example, if our block moves to the right, which it did in all of these cases, and our force is also to the right, then there's zero degrees between those two vectors. They are in line with each other. So we got the work done is the force times d times cosine zero, and cosine zero is just one. If our displacement is to the right and the force is down, then, then theta is 90 degrees, and the cosine of theta would give us zero. And if the displacement is to the right and the force is to the left, theta is 180 degrees, and the cosine of that angle gives us a negative one. So we get a dot product. If you're not familiar with dot products, that's okay. We write that this way. It's the magnitude of the force, the magnitude of the displacement, and the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. So either way is fine. Force times displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. That works as long as the force is constant. If the force changes over the distance, then it becomes a little more complicated. Let's take a look at another example. Lifting a block in a gravitational field. And we're going to lift the block at constant speed. So the block had some initial speed. I'm just going to call it V0 because it's constant. It's always V0. Now you know if you throw a block up into the air, it's going to slow down. Gravity is going to work opposite direction and slow it down. We will keep it moving at constant speed by applying some force. We're pushing it up as it's moving. Let's draw a free body diagram for our block. We have us pushing up on it and the weight of gravity, mg, pulling down. And if the block is moving up at constant speed, then the sum of those two forces has to be zero. So the force up has to equal the force of gravity down. Let's look at the work done. Force times the displacement. Now it's moving up and down in the y direction, so I'm going to call it delta y this time, times the cosine of the angle between them. So the force is in the upward direction. Our displacement is in the upward direction. So theta equals zero. There's no angle between them. You put the tails together, and they both point along the same line. So that's f times delta y cosine zero. That's just mg delta y. The work done in lifting this box up is mg delta y. Now let's look at the work done in lowering it at constant speed. It's moving at the same speed the whole way down. The free body diagram shows that the weight is acting down on this object. And if we want it to move at constant speed, we have to apply a force up on the object so that it can continue moving down at constant speed. So the force we apply has to be equal to mg. So the work done is force times displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. In this case, the force is up, the displacement is down, so that leaves 180 degrees between them. Okay, for the total trip, the box goes up and down. The work done is going to be mg delta y plus a negative mg delta y zero. No work done. And let's think about this for a second. Did the box's energy change? It was moving with a certain speed at a certain height in a gravitational field initially. 
we raised it up and then we lowered it back down and it was still moving with the same speed at the same height its energy didn't change and this is one of those situations where you have to get used to the terminology so in everyday usage in everyday language we use terms like energy and work well we use them a little differently in physics in physics work has very specific meaning and it means energy transfer in this case we do positive work lifting something up negative work lowering it back down if it's back to the same energy it had initially no work was done on the object so you go to the gym you lift weights for an hour you leave how much work did you do none all the weights are right back where they started when you got there you did no work you have to get used to the physics definition it's similar with velocity and acceleration earlier in the quarter velocity in physics is a vector quantity has to have direction associated with it in everyday language we don't always use it that way acceleration has specific meanings and uh, and not always the same as in everyday language so you have to get used to that same with work and energy